Alright, the smelter hammer in Dark Souls 2. Yeah, it might have the appearance of a giant chicken drumstick or a turkey leg. But if you love strength builds, and ultra great swords are neither ultra nor great enough for you, somehow, then this might be, uh, well, it might still be a bit too much to handle. I mean, you kind of would expect your character to sink down into the ground from merely holding it. And if you decide to take it for a spin, then it is in fact the case that it has a special attack that takes you for a ride. Or flight, I should say, perhaps. However, even though it is called a hammer, it was apparently originally an axe that's molten beyond recognition. Well, at least that does answer the age-old question of what came first, the chicken or the axe. So, what would it be like to rotisserie chicken your way through the game by using the smelter hammer's L2 attack as your only attack? Well, it is certainly an awkward move to use, but if you would just mod it into the game at the start of a regular new game, then it would be pretty easy to simply tank your way through all the incoming damage while Paul driving your powerful poultry everywhere. Eh, I don't know, that sounds a bit boring. So, one alternative could be to go along the classic Otsdarva route by entering the company of champions. However, I have yet another alternative. The interesting thing about Dark Souls 2 is that it actually makes changes to New Game Plus, and therefore, we're going to start fresh on New Game Plus instead. Which means that nothing carries over from the previous cycle. But, on top of having to deal with New Game Plus damage from enemies on a fresh character, I want to add some additional restrictions. First of all, no armor of any kind. And secondly, we cannot level up vitality or lower our equip burden below the fat rolling limit by any other means. So that means that we not only have to avoid incoming damage while fat rolling, but being over the weight limit comes with an even worse punishment. Namely, a massive stamina regeneration penalty. And uh, that is a problem when an attack leaves you vulnerable on the ground, because even if you would level up all the way to 99 endurance, the smelter's L2 will always drain your entire stamina bar anyway. On top of that, in Dark Souls 2 it already takes a while before your stamina starts to regenerate in the first place. And although I suppose it would make sense to simply unequip the weapon while moving through areas to prevent fat rolling, I don't know, that's not really in the spirit of the run. So I also didn't want to do that. I guess I probably should have, but uh, nah. I am putting all my eggs in one basket to show the residents of Drung Lake that I belong at the top of the pecking order by spending most of the playthrough face down on the floor. Huh. Well, at least throwing yourself repeatedly against your opponent is what challenge running is all about. So this is either going to be the ultimate spin to win, or I'll just end up spreading my wings and flying uh, right off the handle probably. Alright, so even though we're a new game plus already, given that it's technically a completely new character, I don't have the stats yet to wield this unwieldy wing. But we can easily obtain the required amount of souls by, uh, well let's face it, start to run like literally any other playthrough. Namely by making the Dragon Rider fall off his platform by abusing the evidently terrible AI in this game. And I'm not saying that as an insult, but uh, you have to be one massive dumbass to allow yourself to get baited down into the water. I think so, I'm not completely sure. But I think that once you're... Whoa, whoa that's right, we're fat rolling and I don't... Have, uh, I don't have my Estes even equipped. <laughs> well, that's helpful. <sighs> Damn it, I'm getting my wings clipped before I can even learn to fly. Well, at least now I have just enough souls to meet the strength requirement for two-handing this weapon. Which, in principle, is all we need anyway. However, with only six vigor, six endurance and six adaptability, we are highly vulnerable against New Game Plus enemies. So it would be very beneficial to get the Ring of Steel Protection as a defense boost. This guy is a lot of health for an NPC. <laughs> oh, I do have to make sure that he doesn't fall off the, over, the, over the edge, because then you cannot get his ring. Oh, oops, this is not good. No, not good. How does this happen? Well, because I'm fat rolling and I don't have any ADP. <laughs> Still flirting with madness. Can I flirt with madness? Hey, I, I missed! Oh, he missed too. Oh, that's Dark Souls 2 for you. 
fuck, this is not good. Shouldn't have picked a fight with this guy, basically. Ah! No! Don't follow me! No! Oh, I don't have any iframes. Quick, just attack again. No, no, don't. He has iframes. Shit! Quick, die! Just die, 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 die! No! Are you kidding me? Oh, well, he actually missed me? He has another Estus. No! How are we both this incompetent? Oh my god, no! No! He still got me! Oh. oh my god, I actually missed. Yeah, I can't. Damn it, why can't I kill this guy? <laughs> yeah, this attack might be very powerful in principle, but if only the spin connects, you do relatively low damage. And once you achieve liftoff, there's no tracking whatsoever. So, as you can imagine, trying to control this uncontrollable centrifugal force can lead to some really undesirable consequences! Oh, oh my knee. Poopa. 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 Oh, wait, that's right, I don't actually have any knees. Or arms or legs, for that matter. But uh, yeah, the point is that the weapon is powerful in principle, but there's a lot more to it than just potential damage output. And the main issue throughout the entire playthrough will be stamina regeneration. So my first priority was of course to gather upgrade materials, but as an additional benefit of gaining access to the mansion, is that in turn it gives you a free Ferrous Lockstone, which then allows you to access the Clorenty Ring for some much needed stamina regen. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, what, what the fuck? Uh, that's a Nugent Plus thing. Well, that's helpful. I hope that stays in place now the... Uh, I, I put the stone in. Damn it, I didn't even know that that would happen. That's right, there is an extra enemy here. Fucking spear hollows. Oh god, that, that little bit! Come on! What the fuck? Now, I suppose I could have picked up the aromatic ooze beyond the gate to buff my weapon, but uh, I was thinking about only using theme-appropriate buffs, namely spicy marinade and uh, uh, salmonella. You know, uh, undercooked chicken, the opposites, basically. But given that I wasn't able yet to add any fire damage, I decided to just go and cold turkey. I mean, my weapon was at plus 4 already, so despite this being new game plus, I did expect to have a lag up on the last giant. But, uh, well... I can't really put a positive spin on this, but apparently he had a leg up on me. Mainly the foot attached to said leg. Yeah, I thought only my face would get bruised, but evidently my ego got uh, the brunt of it. Yeah, now it killed me because of that little bit. You know, I should actually use an effigy then. But the problem is I can only barely survive, so I have to be at full health. It's kind of a waste. I still died! I was at full health and I still died! How the hell is that possible? Well, what you guys suggesting that I launch... Oh, fuck. That I launch myself away from him. First of all, because of that, <laughs> that doesn't already not really work that well. But once he removes his arm, he will get extra reach. Okay, I have to... If I can make him fall over, but... Oh, fuck. I don't have ADP, so I cannot actually... And I'm fat rolling, so I can't really roll through his arm. <laughs> Get away! Ooh, that was close. I got him! I got him! I got him! I got him! Okay. <laughs> well, that was harder than you would expect, <laughs> given that was the last giant, but okay. Fair enough. Ironically, the Pursuer was much easier than the last giant, not merely because I could make use of the lack of hitbox on his shield side when he dashes towards you, but also because this weapon does a massive amount of poise damage, as you can imagine. Especially when the full combo connects, 
In fact, poise damage is evidently like an invisible meter. So even if you only hit them with a spin, the poise damage does carry over to an extent. Of course, this is only applicable to specific boss fights, but I can already tell you that it would prove to be an actual lifesaver later on. And on top of that, with the Pursuer down, I had another boost in damage because of the Ring of Blades, but that of course would be nothing compared to upgrading to plus 6 using large Titanite shards at the second blacksmith. And even more importantly, by acquiring the Fragrant Branch near the second Pursuer, I could gain access to my first Titanite chunks, as well as a better version of the Clorenty Ring already. Well, I did say chunks as in plural, but uh, the Crystal Lizard is not really a viable option, it seems. But then again, in this freaking game, even in regular playthroughs, depending on your weapon class, you can hardly ever hit them in the first place. <laughs> Annoying little bastards. Well, regardless, a plus 7 weapon should be more than enough for Nachka. I mean, my standard approach always is successful here. Well, I guess it would have been if I didn't get stuck on a branch. Well, at least my point is that my damage output is more than sufficient. And... Uh, what the fuck? Okay, maybe I'm just messing up slightly uh, here and there. Emphasis not necessarily on the word slightly. However, apart from me being a bird brain, my chicken leg did do sufficient damage and even helpful poise damage. But as I mentioned before, the real issue was stamina regen, even with the Clorenty Ring. Because it was mainly the time before stamina even starts to regenerate in the first place, and also my total amount. Given that fat rolling covers almost no distance, but under these circumstances even running required very strict timing to avoid our homing soul mass. Regardless, never thought I would say this, but uh, Natchka, I'll smell to you later, because I think it's a better idea if I return here later with more stamina, meaning fighting some other bosses first, and of course collecting some titanite chunks in the process to upgrade my weapon. But even though the skeleton lords were unlikely to give me much trouble, <laughs> but then again I would have thought the same thing of Natchka, however getting there in the first place can be a little bit of an issue because of the sheer amount of enemies along the way. Mainly because I insisted on trying to run past everything, causing everyone to get aggroed and chase me as an inevitable result. And uh, well, I guess if you're gonna run around like chickens do with their heads cut off, then you shouldn't be surprised when they eventually come home to roost. So it took a while, but I did make it to the boss. And sure, they are weak to blunt damage. And they are also, well, just weak in general. However, when defeating the Lord wielding the staff, the resulting summons will try to outspin to win me. Because if you cannot quickly get rid of the bone wheels when they spawn, things can uh, quickly spin out of control. And the thing is that Shalquar only sells 10 alluring skulls until he reaches the castle, and I specifically wanted to preserve those for the eventual fight against Freya. Now, any of these skeletons evidently can in fact drop an alluring skull, but that's of course completely random. Now fortunately, after getting rid of the bone wheels, it is more a matter of patience and tanking after face planting. However, despite that, I must say that I had to put in a lot more effort against this boss than I would have expected. Regardless, after working my chicken to the bone, I was able to make it extra chunky by upgrading it all the way to plus 10. And on top of that, the next boss would be the covetous demon. And what possible threat could he ever pose? I mean, he already has Cartman levels of addiction to KFC, so there's no way he could resist such a succulent self-slinging snack attack. Moreover, in any playthrough, he basically just rolls over and dies. And, uh, well, uh, he did roll over, and uh, there was dying involved, but, uh, well. <laughs> you hate to cover this demon because from so far you use your likeness without your permission. Okay, I understand. That's shit damage. And that's a shit hitbox. <laughs> and that's just plain shit. <laughs> okay. Dying to the covetous demon, yeah. It can be a thing, unfortunately. That's uh, nice. <laughs> okay, let's do things a bit more careful than I usually would. Uh oh. Tail swipe, no! Ha! Huh. Uh oh. Yeah, stamina is definitely a problem. Uh, in this entire playthrough, stamina is going to be an issue. Whoa, what the fuck? Okay. Jesus, fuck, dude. Okay, I was next to him, but when he jumps, it still hits you. Jesus. 
Okay, let's see if there are actually sort of safe attack opportunities. Why does that have a... I think it has a shockwave or something. I know, it looks very weird to me. Oh, the corpse strategy. Oh, I haven't even thought of that. <laughs> Normally you don't need any strategy against this guy. I guess we could give it a try at least. I mean, <laughs> at least that mechanic actually means something for once. <laughs> okay, let's see what he actually does. <laughs> What the hell? Yeah, I thought he would simply eat it then. Okay. So what is he supposed to do then? Okay, now he's going. Okay. Wait, he's taking reduced damage when he. Uh, okay, that's not helpful then. Wait, you can also get him to uh, to poison himself, but uh, it's probably not gonna work. Well, actually, attacking after the tail slam, that would also kind of work, but... Tail attack, yeah. One. Two. Oh, he can also do it only two times. Damn it, I'm dead. Oh, I'm still alive, somehow. Oh, and I... You can, I don't know what the, the confidence demon does. Who, who knows what he does? Um, What would be a better option, then? Well, the Rune Sandals are very weak to strike damage, so... <laughs> Cover this demon is too difficult, so let's go to the Rune Sandals. Very, a very strange set play for already. Okay, that's good damage. That's good damage, and they stagger. Ah, what, what the fuck? Come on! That is fucking bullfuck. I actually fell off. Yeah, I'm dead. Well, one of the biggest problems with this weapon is not so much uh, damage because it can be very good, but uh, the stamina regen uh, penalty, that's uh, that's a problem. <laughs> hey, they can also spin to win. Damn it, the... My weapon actually blocks my vision. That's kind of annoying. Uh-oh, no, that's not helpful. No, not helpful at all. I shouldn't have locked on to the other one. Ah! No! Oh, damn it. I am person. I'm uh, drinking my infamous raspberry wine. Which I think is warranted. Oh, fuck. Ooh, I, ah, the lock on uh, that was weird. Ah, no! Ah. I pretty much have to go down now. Pure gas. Oh, I survived. Nice. Oh, this this is good. Wow, actually, I avoided that with fat rolling. That's pretty uh, surprising, but welcome. Come on. Yeah, get him, get him. Yes, we defeated the boss. Progress. <laughs> and the rune samples were easier than the covetous demon. Imagine that. <laughs> Although I'm Ambert now, or oh, Ambert, <laughs> you know what I mean. And if I upgrade my uh, my vigor a bit, maybe then the Covetous Demon will be doable. <laughs> that sounds so weird. But I first need to focus on uh, not dying in uh, a single hit. Oh, whoa, holy crap, that's a lot of levels. Yeah, I definitely should uh, eventually get Govlan, uh, Govlan's help to get poison uh, resin, because I think that's going to be helpful at some point. I mean, that spin... There's a lot of attacks, so a lot of poison buildup. I think that's helpful. Wow, we defeated Covetous Demon after multiple attempts. <laughs> but that's definitely a very interesting uh, experience. Very interesting experience. Yeah, GG on uh, Covetous Demon. Wow. Unbelievable. So, now with the Sentinels ruined, I could make my way to Sinner's Rise. Although not in order to fight the Lost Sinner yet, because with the New Game Plus addition of two extra Pyromancer NPCs, I definitely wanted to save her for later. But the reason I went here was in order to collect the Bloomkite Shield for extra stamina regeneration that I desperately needed. 
Although it might be the case that it made me look at my little green bar through rose tinted glasses. Because it actually doesn't really do that much to begin with. But other than stamina regen, there was also a way to extend the bar itself by acquiring the second dragon ring. And that way I should have enough to outrun Natsuka's magic projectiles without absurdly strict timing. Yeah, it is certainly a unique experience that I had to come back to both the Covetous Demon as well as Natsuka because I couldn't defeat them the first time. But at the very least it was a welcome surprise that going through Earth and Peak went with relative ease. Okay, well, emphasis on the word relative I suppose. But at least contrary to some of my other challenge runs in this game, this time around Mipha was nothing to lose her head over. And given that I had now enough souls to purchase the cat ring, it was time to, uh, well, certainly not time to flutter down the gutter. Because with this amount of weight, even the cat ring can hardly reduce enough gravity damage. Oh, wait, I'm not even wearing it. Uh, never mind. But even so, I made it all the way down to where I could finally collect my first great soul. Unfortunately, I had little choice but to tank my way through the nuking plus damage of this boss, given how often I would be vulnerable on the ground. And uh, yeah, that might be an issue. Or, especially with my rotten luck, or perhaps that's exactly what allowed me to succeed the very next try, given that he happened to not do any moves that could actually one-shot me. I did get some really close calls, but by the skin of my wing, I could barely tank my way through this fight. And that was highly beneficial, since that would allow me to gain access to the Sunken King DLC, which meant I could go and collect Flint's Ring. Because remember that in DS2, Flint's Ring has nothing to do with how much weight you are carrying. It's about how low your vitality stat is. So given that I wasn't leveling it up at all, I would get the maximum amount of damage from this ring. Regardless, I cannot enter the DLC without getting the key from the giants. And well, at least contrary to the seppuku only run, this time I correctly got rid of the two, yes, two invaders in this area by using the fog wall. Because that allows you to make use of a little trick. Because quitting out after defeating one of the giants automatically grants you the key. No idea why that works, but it does work somehow. Unfortunately, it still requires me to go down there in the dark. Who's that stumbling around in the dark? State your business or prepare to get winged. Okay, one more hit. I don't have stamina. Alright then, very nice. Because, see, now we are, have the ability to quit out, and when you do that... For some reason, I don't know how it works, or why it works this way, but then you will get the key. Now, in the Sunken King DLC, you need a bow to manipulate certain switches, but that's within the rules, as long as I don't use the bow to inflict damage on enemies. However, I think the first one is right next to the platform, and doesn't require a bow in the first place, or maybe... Damn it! why can't I ever remember how this works? It's the one on the... Right? Or the left one? Ah, crap -alicious. I cannot tell which switch is which switch. How typical is that? Oh, hey, that one works out fine. So, I don't expect any further problems. Missed opportunity. Hey, what the fuck? Hey, what the fuck? Why am I getting attacked from behind? Where the hell did he come from? Ah, and now he cannot go back. Son of a bitch. Yeah, now I'm dead. Son of a bitch. What the hell? Well, eventually we got our hands on Flint's ring. So that is a nice damage boost. However, damage output is not really the issue per se in this playthrough to begin with. It's surviving through the areas. That's the real danger. And now the time has come that we have to survive everyone's favorite area of the game. The place where the old Iron King ruled with an Iron Keep. Because it keeps players from progressing unlike the Iron King himself in most cases. In fact, the true bosses of this area were the NPC invaders, which in challenge runs is actually not even that unusual. But in most cases, Danis the Manus, father of the abysmal magic spamming attacks, is the real issue. However, I couldn't even get to the point of having to worry about him, because although Sharon is caring, Sharon couldn't care less about anything I quite literally tried to throw at her. Even trying to knock her into the smoldering hot mass of molten iron, was a hot mess of trying to actually hit her instead of the stupid little pillar next to the staircase. Now I suppose I should have purchased the Force Miracle to knock her over the edge, since that doesn't inflict any damage and is therefore not against the rules. But then again I didn't have enough faith for it anyway, and I didn't feel like respecting so instead I decided to just wing it and make a run for it. 
hoping I would be able to get to the Smelter Demon in one piece. Of course, in practice that once again comes down to running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Moreover, the B team purposely changed the fork wall in this game into a go fork yourself wall, probably in order to discourage such an approach. Meaning that not only don't you get through in one piece, but you probably could watch every episode of it in the time it takes to get even a single attempt at the actual boss fight. Now, of course, when I actually made it through, you could practically hear the smelter demon thinking when he saw my character walk in with her smelter hammer. Oh, I can easily outsmelt her. And uh, well, that was actually a pretty fair assessment, I would say, because fighting this boss without armor, while fat rolling, while draining all your stamina and leaving yourself vulnerable on the floor can be uh, slightly frustrating. Especially knowing that if you fail, you have to do that terrible run back multiple times over again just to get another chance. Now fortunately this is where a salmonella buff can come in handy, because poison damage and even poison buildup remains the same, regardless of the fact that during his phase transition, he will take reduced damage. Meaning that you will get actual results this time if you strike the iron when it's hot, because despite him turning up the oven, and despite the fact that it's kind of weird that you can poison an empty and somehow living set of armor, it's still the case that he cannot handle the power of undercooked chicken. Well, that at least gave me a fighting chance, but in all fairness, my frustration was already reaching its boiling point because of all the failed runbacks. So I'm not sure if I would be able to take much more if I couldn't achieve victory very soon. He's poisoned, that's good! Quick, kill him! I think I kill him- uh Oh no, he, uh, no, 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 that was too eager. Uh. Oh, thank you, ADP. Kill him. Oh. Son of a biscuit. Son of a... F uh. Oh, we made it through the first part of Iron Keep. Son of a... F yeah. Don't you love Iron Keep? Such a great place to be. So, afterwards we could acquire the Ring of Blades plus one, although that is a very minor increase. In fact, I have more rings than ring slots now, so I'm already juggling with what I want to have equipped. Regardless, unlike the first section of Iron Keep, the second part went very smoothly. I probably would have gone through it without dying if I hadn't tried to uh, swing myself across the gap. Just to see if I could. Evidently, I uh, couldn't. And come to think of it, there's also no functional reason to do it in the first place. Now, the old Iron King was a little more tricky than usual because of my roll distance. So it wasn't an ADP issue, but about not covering enough distance in order to get outside of his large hitboxes in the first place. But despite that, there wasn't that much to it as long as I could prevent launching myself into the lava. However, then something happened that I've never seen before. The boss re-emerged from the lava all the way at the right side of the arena, which caught me completely off guard. I have seen him in multiple locations before, but in all these years I've never seen him all the way on the right side. Not even during the 40 plus minute fight when fighting him with a torch. So once more, you're never done learning in a Souls game. Unfortunately, there are also things I just refuse to learn, like uh, sending elevators back up, so that I don't have to repeatedly die again after dying, you know, in order to pull the switch to get it back up again, which was especially a problem because the last center was next. And on certain challenge runs, she can suddenly become a massive obstacle, especially on Nuke Plus with two additional red invaders joining the fight. Speaking of which, I was playing online and I actually got invaded by a human player. However, I think he couldn't figure out where exactly I was, so he never actually showed up. Which is a shame because it has happened before that I got invaded during a challenge run and managed to defeat the invader without breaking the rules of the run. Well, not always of course, but let's focus on the one I did win. However, speaking of winning a fight, I wasn't doing much of that against the last sinner. Not only because of our two little wingmen, who were an absolute pain in the stick, but the sinner herself constantly jumps away. So I could hardly ever get my full damage in, while she and her minions were doing massive damage to me. Now I thought I could turn things around into my favor by applying some salmonella to my drumstick, 
But if you cannot get consistent hits in, then you're unlikely to proc the poison. Not that it really matters anyway if you can't manage to get rid of the two invaders. Yeah, <laughs> how the hell am I supposed to do that? I don't see anything. Where's the sitter? Yeah, I'm dead. Oh, I got lucky. Yeah, fucking hell. When do I attack? They still hit me. Yeah, come on! The pyromancer staggered me and that's why I couldn't avoid uh, the jump attack. Oh, I hate how much room the chicken wing takes up on screen. Okay, let's not fuck it up now. Okay, that was actually... Uh, that was a way to fuck it up. Come on. Don't... Roll! Oh! How did that not hit? Okay. That was a save healing opportunity. I can actually block also. Maybe that would actually be helpful. Seriously? What the hell? My stamina. Yeah, come on. I keep taking damage. I keep taking damage. Yeah, hit. No. No. Why? Kella, please do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. What the fuck, bro? Oh my god. That was a pain in the dick. Yeah. Although I really appreciate the additions to Nuking Plus, the two additional wingmen seem a bit unnecessary in my eyes. I mean, who the hell even needs a wingman to get a chick? If I want to get a date, I can do that perfectly well on my own. Hey, how are you doing, girl? I mean, uh, the worst thing she can say is no, right? So, how about going on a date on Friday? What do you think you're doing? I have my pride, you damn fool! Yes, I suppose you think you're special. Well, you're not. Burn! Burn in hell! You cross-eyed hollow! There's no hope for anyone like you! The gods will not have it! Just die! 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 Die a thousand times again. Curses upon you. Upon you and yours. For generations eternal. All of you. Eternal pain and suffering. Lots and lots. Okay, <laughs> then maybe on Saturday? Hello? Well, after receiving such a burn, and also to come back to the New Game Plus editions, after the Phoenix Lost Sinner, I also received the Old Witch Soul, which can be traded for the Flame Weapon buff, to make my chicken drumstick extra spicy. So, then I made sure to pick up a roaster for my rooster, in order to add some helter to my smelter. Hammer. 
Wow, Kenny Rogers Roasters finally open. Look at the size of that neon chicken. And uh, well, that does sound like a great addition since only one great soul remains and Freya happens to be weak to fire damage. However, somehow, this does not have the same effect as a tiny little stick with only its tip on fire. Because the thing is that a torch keeps the small spiders away, but I am required to two-hand my weapon. It's an L2 attack after all. Now, alluring skulls also work, but Shalquar only sells a limited amount until you reach the castle. Yeah, and here I was thinking that the Lost Sunner would be the hardest great soul to obtain. But the Duke's Deer Armored Spider unironically became one of the hardest bosses in the entire playthrough. Yes, both literally and figuratively, because my weapon was constantly bouncing off of her. And if you combine that with dozens of spiders on your trail, all doing nuke plus damage, having no armor, while fat rolling with a stamina penalty, and already limited movement because of the whole tremor mechanic, and practically no alluring skulls, yeah, all those factors combine into a tangled web indeed. Come on, it was one more hit. Ah, oh, fuck, now I'm in, in spider web. No. I'm in spider web. I'm in spider web. Heal, heal. I can't move. I can't move. Yeah, come on. I was in spider web. Nah. Her leg was in the way. And it didn't hit for whatever. If, Jesus, motherfucker. Unbelievable. Oh, why doesn't uh, Shalquar sell infinite skulls before you reach the castle? Well, at least I killed a few spiders. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I was completely stuck. Dude, get the fuck out of here. Oh my god. Now I can't even get up the ladder. I'm in web. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Finally. No! Nah. Unbelievable. Wow! Yeah! Huh? Sa fa 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 flop flop on the floop. Flop sa That came I <laughs> that I didn't even realize that Wow. Ah sa but I don't even know how to respond to that. Ah. All right. Uh, play along uh, Jimmy. So that I can attack Bimmy instead. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa, fuck. He stay up. Ah, whoa. Okay, that <laughs> didn't that didn't go so well. Okay, just launch myself towards Bimmy. Yeah, that works. Oh, and I went over my head. Oh. Okay, get behind him. He doesn't have a hitbox behind him after all. Well, I said in the last Eldering video that that uh, from software boss fights are often described as an elegant dance. We are dancing to an extent, but it's not very elegant. <laughs> Ooh. Ah! Damn it! I'm so slow. Okay, let's just go for it. Yeah, got him. Nice. Nice, delicious. And I even... Oh, I, I was just about to say, I did not forget to equip the Silver Serpent Ring, but I did forget something else. I forgot the Sunbro... Uh, I completely forgot to get the gesture. It's tradition, and I messed it up. <laughs> Reset run. <laughs>
Well, anyway, I did make it into the castle, so I think it's about time for my lunch break. Ah, yeah, that looks nice. I hear that sizzling, that's just music to my ears. What a grill with garlic and saffron on the skin. What a grill. It's searing and it'll melt in your mouth. With a beer in my hand, it tastes so supreme. I'm still in a dream, chicken eater. Chicken eater. I don't know, it's, it's the best I could come up with. However, when it comes to spicy chicken, that's not gonna help me deal with the Mirror Knight given his massive fire resistance. However, some salmonella resin would be perfect, because after reflecting back on previous runs, I realized that poison strats have helped me out many times before. So, mirror mirror in your hand, who is the fairest in the land? Uh, wait, what? Well, that's not fair at all. But how the hell do I avoid the shield with this attack? That is not a good thing. Like here, how do I avoid the shield? Okay, this is pretty messed up. Dude, I can't fucking hit this guy. Damn it. Jesus, he's already summoning. Oh, I was like, hey, let's poison him while he's summoning. But uh, the poison's already gone. Damn it, this sucks. This is uh, a bit messed up. Because I can only basically do chip damage against the fucking knight. Because each time I attack, I bounce off against his shield. Uh oh. No! I can't I can't dodge because I don't have stamina. Whoa, that goes through the pillar. I didn't even know that to be honest. Okay, good. Okay, I poison uh, he's poisoned at least, so that's good. Okay, that's some good damage. Okay, nice. But where's the knight? Oh, he's still there. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's some good RNG. The knight is... Knight... Hey, why is he not doing anything? Okay. I've never... Oh, now he's suddenly uh, doing something. That was weird. <laughs> okay, nice hit. Uh-oh. No, don't... Don't do it on me. Oh, nice, he's poisoned, so that should be enough. Or I can even maybe finish him now. Oh, no, fuck, no, 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 no. No, 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 I'm stuck, I'm stuck. I'm stuck! Ah, poison! <laughs> the poison killed him! The poison killed him! Ah. Wow. Oh, the poison finished him off, otherwise I would probably have died there. Wow. Oh, hey, someone said left-handed. I didn't even think about that. You can actually use the weapon in your left hand. Hold on, let's take uh, take a look. Let's check. That might actually have been helpful. I didn't even think about that. Because then you attack at least away from the shield side. I mean, you would still have bounced off, but at least the first hit, as you can see in the spin. That doesn't go towards the shield. Okay. Yeah, we made it through. Do I have repair powders for... Well, I have a whole bunch of repair powders. So that can help with... Uh, with my butt cover. The only problem is... Uh, he doesn't protect that well from uh, magic attacks. Damn it, I need to heal before I can even use repair powder. Forlorn? Son of a biscuit? Why is Forlorn invading me? Well, that's fucking helpful. Damn it, I just used repair powder and I'm still at risk. What the hell? No, no I'm too... I'm too... The two invaders at the same time? What the hell? Oh, I actually... The ring broke. God damn it. Well, this is fucked. Son of a biscuit. Oh fuck, a lot of damage and there's a dark beast here. Oh, and another... What the fuck? You see, if I make one mistake, I'm finished. Oh, what the hell? I got hit through the wall. 
fuck? This is way too slow. To be fair, even with Gower's Wing, I could hardly make uh, make my way through. <laughs> I can't even pick up my souls. Oh, oh, it's even more. Jesus fuck, dude. That's way too expensive. Shit, what? It's already I'm taking way too many hits. Oh, oh my god. Look how much damage I take. What the hell is this? Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. Taking a nap on the water. Okay. <laughs> okay, don't stand up. Good. That's such a weird thing. Why do they not stand up anymore? I mean, I'm glad they don't, but it's very weird. Oh fuck, now we have the entire group. Whoa, the actually the the other one stood up now. Damn it, I want to go all the way back, but they stood up. What the fuck? I can't move. They they are back. The other one is back. See, that was back. Oh fuck! Come on, what the fuck, dude? Unbelievable! How are they this fucking fast? This is unbelievable. Um. <laughs> I wasted all that stuff and I made zero progress. Okay, we're getting closer, but still, those three are all going to follow me and there's no way, nothing I can do about it. Come on, let me, give me one opportunity to heal. Okay, get inside. Thank you, camera. It's one of them. Oh no, I don't have stamina. Okay, where is he? Oh, there. Okay, one more attack. Okay. We're getting close. Oh, they have melee attacks. Okay. And the healer can go fuck herself. Wow. Oh, we made it. Oh my god, I'm getting too old for this shit. Well, I'm certainly no spring chicken anymore. But at least the one good thing about Shrine of Amana is that defeating the boss of the area is usually nothing compared to actually getting to the boss in the first place. Although I was kind of worried about Kermit's foreskin because I might bounce off of it. However, that didn't turn out to be the case at all. Showing that chicken legs are superior to frog legs, although if you ever had them before, you would probably agree that frog legs actually taste like chicken. Although apparently that does seem to be a weird quirk of human taste that unusual types of meat that you wouldn't know what to expect of turn out to taste like chicken. Well, something else I didn't quite know what to expect of, using this particular attack, and given that it usually ends up with me playing a game of chicken, in the sense of keeping my distance and baiting specific attacks, is the fight against Velstad. After all, he has huge hitboxes, however they somehow were in fact able to pass over me when I was on the ground. In this game? Hmm. And on top of that, even though his defenses get a massive boost when he buffs himself, this has no effect on poison damage and poison buildup. So even though we're both holding a big one, it just goes to show that his massive balland is no match for my massive chicken boner. Well, at least that would have been the case if I wasn't such a massive balland myself. No, oh, come on! No! <laughs> Remember in the seppuku run where I actually got hit while I was behind him? Ooh, crap. Okay, let's not have a repeat. Let's not have a repeat. Uh, is this AI uh, disabled? Oh no, it's still moving. What the hell? 
Uh, B team, what are you doing? Uh, hello? I think he doesn't want to play anymore. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not allowed to call him names, I think. But let's just quickly finish it then. <laughs> Alright. <sighs> okay then, there we are, the King's Ring. However, that means, and that would be the smartest thing to do, is to first go to the Throne Wanker and Throne Defecator. And I never look forward to that fight. Not a good start. And I'm dead. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, whoa, that's good damage. If the full uh, thing hits, that's actually good. Okay, but they can also block my attack, so... That's not helpful. Okay, at least he has his, his shield is gone, but he does a lot more damage now. Let me just see if I can just launch myself into him. Got, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, that works out, works out, works out. Uh-oh, but now I need to stay alive. Okay, good damage. I think that was even counter damage or his ability or whatever the fuck you want to call it. I don't give a shit. Fuck, he blocks. Quick, kill him. Yeah! Nice. Alright. Brightbug was definitely doing a lot of work there. Brightbug was definitely doing a lot of work. Alright, even though we cannot face off against Nassandra yet, but after defeating the Throne Wanker and Throne Defecator, the main game is basically already over. Because the final stretch of the game, including Nashandra herself unfortunately, is uh, kind of underwhelming. Now, the Giant Lord surprisingly did manage to get consistent damage in, because I was on the ground so much, but by now I was able to tank my way through. And once you guide Nashandra away from her curse orbs, well, you know how it is. Her visual design is great for her final boss, but mechanically it's uh, a pretty disappointing way to end a run. Hey, yeah, so long, Queenie. May flights of chickens sing thee to thy rest. Or something. However, even though I didn't have enough time left for all three DLCs, you know, with Armored Core on the horizon, I did still have one more stream left, so I went befittingly into the DLC from which the Smelter Hammer originated. And well, let's just see how far we can get. Pretty sure it takes reduced damage when you first attack him, so it's still not bad, actually. But, again, I'm not very worried about damage output. More about damage <laughs> input in the sense of attack opportunities. Oh, okay. Uh. At least I have ADP. Because with 6 ADP, that would have killed me. <laughs> that overhead attack. That has a bigger... Hitbox then it has visually. Now it's been a while since I fought Fume Knight. I think the Seppuku run, that was the last time I fought him. Oh nice. That was a very helpful stagger there. Oh, oops. Again, 6 ADP would have <laughs> that would have killed me. Well, it would have hit me. I don't know if it would have killed. I don't have stamina! Okay. It's actually going very well. He's still not the second phase, by the way. Uh oh. Oh! It was actually a good thing that he went to second phase there because that gave me a healing opportunity. Speak of which. Okay, let's make sure I'm actually at full health before I do any unnecessary risks. 
Damn, the staggers are really helpful. Whoa, that's a lot of damage. Woo, that was actually not smart. Uh oh. Uh. What? That didn't hit me because I was on the ground. That was very nice. Nice! Oh, my favorite attack. <laughs> wow! A first... <laughs> a first try Fume Knight. That was not what I was expecting. That was way easier than I expected. Okay. Huh. Well, although Blue Smelter surprisingly posed a little more of a threat than Fume Knight did, ultimately it wasn't all that different from the red version. Although this one has the same moveset but with different timings and some additional AoEs during phase transitions, but with an uh, even worse runback. In fact, it turned out that in order to even reach him at all, I was forced to break my rule of always being over the weight limit. Because the astrologer's weight increasing aura, that normally would make you fat roll instead of fast roll, would this time literally prevent me from moving altogether. But uh, speaking of terrible runbacks, uh, well... Oh, holy crap, holy crap! I died from fall damage! Are you? Oh, are you fucking real? Hey, it's still not even the worst example of fall damage if you remember this little incident. Quickly roll down the stairs here to avoid the final archer, and then you get. What the fuck? I died from fall damage because I rolled down a slope? Are you kidding me? But when it came to the boss fight itself, wow. It may not include additional NPCs like with the last center. But Alon takes the speed, agility, and especially jumping away before my full attack could connect to an absolute extreme. And being slow with a stamina penalty while fat rolling against Sir Sekiro here, that made my little troll girl hurl herself into an early grave. Well, at least this time it made complete sense that I would constantly crash face first into the ground. Because let's face it, have you ever seen a floor this clean and shiny before? And a mirror floor will make you sore. And that's especially applicable to your face. No, shit, that was not good. No. Oh, I got lucky. Whoa. I got lucky with the stagger there. Huh? <gasps> Please give me a healing opportunity. I can't avoid that. I'm on the ground. Again, I'm on the ground.
Ja! Oh. I went through all of my valuable <laughs> traps. What the hell? Oh. That was basically as bad as when doing it with the seppuku attack. <laughs> Jesus. You know what? I'm first going to take a piss and then we're going to decide what we do. Well, despite all the attempts this took, I still had time left on stream. So I decided to include one last boss fight. Namely against Ava. But uh, here's the thing. I can't even remember the last time I fought this boss. And back then it would have been in a normal playthrough. So I had absolutely no grasp on this boss's moveset. And sure, it might not be all that difficult to learn in principle. But uh, when you take Nugent plus damage. When not wearing any armor. Using an attack that leaves you vulnerable. Then it turns out that almost everything will two-shot you. And the fun thing is that this little kitten really enjoys jumping right into your lap whenever you even attempt to use a healing item. Therefore it would definitely take a lot out of me before I would be able to say Ave to Ava. See and that's why trading damage doesn't work. See how little damage I did? And she took half my uh, life bar. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> and that was unlucky. Okay, that was some good damage at least. So much damage. Oh, got lucky there. Oh my god! It's not avoidable. <laughs> no, couldn't seal. Way too quick. No, unfucking believable. No! I can't run! I can't run because of the stupid stamina mechanic in this game. I just have to go for it! Yeah! Oh! Priscilla's post kind of shows how I'm uh, feeling right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Son of a fuck. No, <laughs> this was not practice for the other two. Oh my god.